Okay, uh, we are at lecture eight for DHCP auto configuration at DNS. So let's just jump right in. Uh, we're going to start looking at uh, DHCP first and talk a little bit about auto configuration. So what does a host need to be able to communicate on the network? So from a bare minimum perspective, they need an IP address, they need a subnet mask, and they need a broadcast address. Now the broadcast address can normally be obtained from uh, the IP address and subnet mask. This goes back to um, the lectures that we had in IP addressing back in week th weeks three and four. Uh, so basically we would be able to derive the broadcast address from uh, the IP address and subnet mask. And in fact, this is what most computers will do nowadays. Um, technically, um, distributions uh, in Linux have the ability to still set a broadcast address, um, but realistically, it's not needed. So other necessary components that we need to be um, you know, effective on the network and be able to communicate inter uh, between networks, so internetworking um, would be things like a default gateway, uh, things like a routing table. So remember that hosts themselves at least when we're talking about uh, hosts that we would use that we're interacting with, servers, uh, computers, things of that nature, uh, those devices are going to be able to operate at uh, layer 7. So we do have the ability to have a routing table, and in fact, we need a routing table to be able to make sure that we can get uh, to the internet works that we need to get to. Uh, host name, so this is going to tie into DNS. Uh, we're going to be talking about later in this lecture, but the host name uh, is going to be extremely important for uh, making sure that human beings can communicate easily with other human beings on other servers and other things of that nature. It's a lot easier to remember a host name than it is to remember an IP address. And then obviously if we're using host names, we need DNS servers and so we need our computers to uh, be able to um, know what the DNS servers are uh, so we have those IP addresses in there. Some of the other options that are going to be uh, pretty important for us, uh, especially with things like Active Directory, using VoIP phones, are going to be NTP, which is the network time protocol that helps us sync the uh, time across the en entire environment, and then VoIP communication. So, for instance, we can set where uh, a phone, when it comes on the network, would go to obtain its configuration, and then through that would be able to set itself up as being a phone that belongs to you individually or, or a certain area or group. Uh, and there are other options and, and there's a lot of that you can do um, to help a host uh, have a ro more of a robust configuration on the network so that it can communicate. So how do hosts get their configuration? So one way obviously is statically. So we have a network administrator or some sort of network, desktop network support or desktop support analyst that, that is doing uh, the provisioning service. Uh, are a process um, and in that case they're going to set the IP address statically, the subnet mask, the default gateway, the DNS servers, all of these things are going to be set um, by the actual uh, human being that is doing uh, the setup. Now this is this is definitely time consuming, uh, it's definitely more error prone um, you know, that would be um, something where you have a user going around to every single computer and setting it up. It's going to take a long time and, and you might make a mistake. Um, you can make an argument that uh, you could use um, sort of some sort of script. You could script some of it out and that's definitely possible. And in fact, things like um, SCCM and other ways of uh, doing an imaging process do remove some of these dependencies. However, um, if you do it statically, you are needing to uh, manually intervene anytime that's, that something needs to be changed. Whereas if we look at something uh, or we look at configurations more automatically, now we're talking about uh, DHCP, which is the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, um, or some sort of stateless auto configuration, um, these are going to be faster. They're not typically going to be error prone. You set your configurations at the server le the server level, and then the clients are going to reach out and, and obtain those configurations. Um, but on the other hand, it is another system or another service to manage. So you're you are going to have another server that you are responsible for. So th there's a little bit of a trade off. But typically, in most scenarios, especially the lar in the larger uh, organizations, it's going to be more advantageous for the organization to use something like DHCP to hand out configurations. So let's jump into the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, or DHCP.
So a little bit of history first, uh, getting a little bit of background on DHCP. So originally there was this protocol called BootP or the Internet Bootstrap Protocol. Now this was uh, kind of more of a, a one-time provider of network configuration information. So it just kind of, it did it automatically, but it only did it once. And so there wasn't really an ability to change or update the configuration once um, it was handed out. Now what's interesting is if we look at DHCP, which uh, you know extends the functionality of BootP. When you're looking in Wireshark, uh, you will actually use the protocol of BootP to find the DHCP traffic versus typing in a protocol of DHCP. And I think this just kind of goes back to the the fact that at its roots, uh, DHCP is more of an extended functionality of BootP. So when we have uh, DHCP, we're implementing this idea of leases. So with leases, we can request, renew, change, update, all of these things uh, that we couldn't do with BootP. Um, and, and ultimately, DHCP uses kind of this agreement or this negotiation process to provide IP address leases. Now, one thing I want to call out specifically is that um, DHCP will... Uh, so that hands out a lease, okay? It doesn't assign IP addresses, um, even though, you know, you might talk about it as assigning an IP address. Uh, if you were to ever take the, the CCNA um, networking test, for example, uh, if you ever got a test or a test question that says true or false, DHCP assigns IP addresses to hosts on the network, the answer would actually be false. So it provides a lease for that uh, particular host to have an IP address. So just a, a small little distinction, and it, it is a bit nitpicky, um, but ultimately it does lease, it doesn't assign. So a little bit more on DHCP. Um, so with DHCP, we're automatically providing configuration information to a host, uh, and there's no administrator intervention needed. So a host can come onto the network with absolutely no network configuration, and then it can obtain that network configuration automatically. Uh, nothing needs to be done for that to happen. So this is definitely uh, used very heavily in both enterprise networks and, as a matter of fact, in home networks. So when you uh, have your your wireless router or your wireless access point or your um, you know your Ethernet network at home from your ISP. Uh, regardless of whether or not you have somebody come out and they install the Xfinity, you know, modem, router, wireless access point, firewall, or um, kind of one thing or one singular box, or you kind of break it out and you want to do stuff a little bit more robust uh, and and a little bit more spread out on on your own. Uh, regardless of how you do it, you end up uh, still using DHCP in in most cases, uh, especially in configurations where uh, Comcast or Charter or whoever comes out sets up your you know your internet in your home and you have Wi-Fi and they say yep you're good to go that's definitely going to be using DHCP to assign certain values and configuration items for you now if you think about more from an enterprise perspective obviously using Wi-Fi is going to be very advantageous for us and, and that's because especially if you think about a large corporation with 50,000 you know endpoints or, or even you know hundred thousand users and endpoints in your environment there's not going to be an opportunity for an administrator to set up each one of those endpoints um, by hand or manually. So DHCP is going to be extremely important for us uh, for handing out configurations. So DC, DHCP was initially handed out, or well, it was created for IPv4. There is an IPv6 version. Obviously, this is going to be something um, that uh, is or it's, it's called DHCP v6. Uh, and we'll touch on this a little bit, but it's not going to be quite as heavily used as the DHCP is for IPv4. So typically, and, and moving forward in this lecture, when we're referring to DHCP, unless I'm specifically saying DHCP v6, uh, assume that I do mean IPv4. So DHCP operates on UDP port 67 for servers and UDP port 68 for clients. So these are going to be the ports that we are going to be used to uh, negotiate our IP address leases. Um, as far as some major components uh, from DH from a DHCP perspective, um, you know we get address management and we get configuration delivery. So we have the opportunity as administrators in this case to uh, determine what portion of an IP address space we're using. We know uh, who is using a particular address uh, by MAC address typically, uh, and ultimately we are able to have a much more efficient method of maintaining who has what address or even more generally, 
what addresses are in use. So this really helps us uh, with scaling our IP address spaces and our various locations for how we want to set up uh, DHCP in our environment. And then we have configuration delivery. So for instance, again, going back to the manual example, if we set up something manually, then we have to manually go back anytime there's a change. With something like DHCP, you know, you know that there's a consistent configuration being delivered, and there's also an opportunity for us to make uh, pretty uh, automatic changes when it comes to a change in configuration. For instance, again, if we go back to the uh, VoIP phone example, if we need to push out a configuration change, uh, and we have our IP, IP address leases set to a short enough duration, uh, we can say basically with, with high level of confidence that if we have our durations for our leases set to, uh, let's say one day, uh, that, that we can reliably get a high percentage of configuration changes pushed out to these VoIP phones in one day. Um, there is an opportunity also for just updating specific options, but we'll, we'll get to that here in, in just a little bit. Um, but ultimately, at the end of the day, what I do want you to remember is that DHCP messages are more or less boot P messages with more options. So that's where the, the real strength and power of DHCP comes from is the options that we're able to use. So DHCP, uh, from an ad address management perspective, so we're, we're dynamically allocating these IP addresses. So the way that we're going to do that is with something called a pool. And so this goes into uh, the three level of address allocation that we have um, for DHCP. And so there's automatic, dynamic, and manual. So automatic is going to be something that is kind of more of a boot P-esque type scenario where we have an address that's given out. It's still given from a pool, but it's never revoked. So we're providing this, this is more of a, a definitely, uh, more of an assignment than it is a lease. Um, and so, uh, you know, so it's, it's kind of a one-time thing, think boot P. But with dynamic, which is gonna be the most common for us, uh, the address is given from this pool of addresses that we're going to configure as a DHCP administrator. Uh, but the address can be revoked, it can be changed, it can be modified, it can be updated uh, with options, all of these different things because it's got this dynamic nature to it. And then there's the manual. Uh, and then that's going to be um, kind of like the DHCP server is going to be um, used to provide the address. But the address has never changed, uh, you know, again, uh, it's more of a static, this is more of kind of a, a boot P type of scenario. So then configuration delivery. So we provide the necessary configurations on our network to the hosts that are requesting them. And again, this is an automatic process. And then you have uh, DHCP protocol message formats that are going to help us deliver this configuration. Uh, and then the, the D configuration delivery portion of DHCP is also gonna help us control states. So we'll get into uh, the state diagram that shows kind of the decision-making process that DHCP can use to help determine what messages it should send. So we'll get into exactly the, the different message types, and this is what I mean by protocol message formats. We have different formats for uh, setting the different options for how we're going to request things. Um, but ultimately, all of these things together help us with the configuration delivery on the network. Address pools and leases. Okay, so we've already mentioned address pools, we've already mentioned leases, but I wanna just do a little bit more of a deep dive on this. So address pools are going to be some range of IP addresses that are able to be provided through DHCP. Um, so it's going to be designed by the DHCP administrator, but ultimately the DHCP server will uh, respect the lease or, or the IP address pool for providing leases. So it'll pick something that's out of that pool and it won't go outside of it, which is helpful from an administration perspective. So typically there's only going to be one IP address pool for a specific network. So normally you can't really consolidate networks into a single pool uh, without some kind of non-best practice shenanigans. Um, there is opportunities for having large networks, uh, but ultimately, uh, as you will see coming up here, uh, DHCP uses broadcast messages to do the initial configuration for a host. So if you recall, what, what drops broadcast messages by default is going to be a router. And so typically routers are going to be our boundaries for not only broadcast domains, but networks in general. So uh, when we get to um, some of these uh, different uh, 
uh, configurations that we talk about how how the actual leases are provided. Um, you know, you you can see that um, it's it's better to have address pools that are um, separated by network than trying to do something that's a little bit more complex. Now, remember, just because you can do it doesn't make it a good idea. So there's almost always a way to sort of uh, work around uh, some of the the rules that are in place, but. Uh, like Windows DHCP server, things like Infoblox, I think they do a pretty good job of making sure that you are following best practices. So again, keep it simple uh, and provide um, nice, solid, uh, defined IP address pools. Now we have uh, leases. So uh, again, IP addresses are leased, they're not assigned. Uh, and there's that distinction for uh, certain types of certification exams. Um, people, other administrators in the industry or in a networking capacity would understand what you mean, um, but just understand that, that technically they are assigned. Now, leases are provided for a specific amount of time. So uh, if we talk about exactly, um, you know, there's not one uh, specific lease duration for uh, everybody. It's, it's kind of uh, spread out amongst Linux, Microsoft, uh, different networking devices. It kind of just depends. Um, so some, uh, in, a, in a lot of cases, uh, you know, 12 to 24 hours is going to be common. Um, you know, especially in um, in specific environments where IP address uh, pool size is a concern, um, you would have that uh, duration be a little bit shorter. Now, Microsoft by default goes for eight days. So if you have a Microsoft DHCP server, you will actually start by default handing out DHCP leases for eight days. Now, there is some pros and cons to duration size. So if we first start with something like Microsoft, every eight days um, you would request a new DHCP lease uh, and there's some renewal aspects there that actually cut it down to like four days uh, but we'll get to that in here in the future uh, but at the same time uh, eight days yeah that's that's great it'll be less traffic however if things need to change or if you have a small ip address uh, pool size then you may run out of IP addresses or you may not be able to update hosts as quickly as you would want to. Now, 12 to 24 hours, that's going to be more network traffic, but definitely a lot more flexibility in what you are able to do from a configuration update perspective, from a uh, management of IP addresses in the pool perspective. You're not going to have as many stale uh, DHCP leases that are out there. So pros and cons to both, uh, but typically uh, the shorter durations are going to be more helpful, especially with networks increasing in bandwidth all the time. Um, now, if we actually want to go back to here real quickly and just take a look at, uh, if we go into uh, command prompt. So this is where we, we can take a look at our uh, DHCP configuration information. If we just do an IP config and then all. And so we get a whole bunch of this uh, information here, but you can see, and this is going to be my my WLAN adapter for my Wi-Fi. Um, you can see here that I have my uh, various IP address information, um, network information, including DHCP server, default gateway, um, and then my DNS servers, and then we have. Uh, the fact that D DHCP is enabled, so we have a yes here. So if this was statically configured, this would not actually be uh, set, or this it wouldn't be set to yes. And now we have a, an FE80 IPv6 address here. We'll talk a little bit about auto configuration, but this is going to be something that is just going to be automatically created for us, and not necessarily uh, having to uh, set something for DHCP in uh, IPv6. And then here you have lease obtained and lease expires. So you have Sunday, October 28th. Uh, so 348.47 is when I got this lease. It expires at 651. So I have uh, in, in my uh, at my location here uh, set to just a few hours to make sure that uh, I don't have any stale uh, DHCP records. And we will keep going here in just a moment.